we'll be speaking about purpose and the mandates. And so I'm talking about the three things that defines your mandate. Um, mandate is a, when we say means a commission. And all of us, like we've said before, throughout the series, there's a word on your life. Hallelujah. There's a, a prophetic word on your life. Especially the day you became a believer, God planted a purpose in your life. Hallelujah. And so we are going to look at the three things. And first thing is who you are. That is your identity. Who you are. The next one is why you are here, purpose, and then where you are going, intention or vision or long-range intention. If you are doing anything, you have an intention. Hallelujah. Proverbs 16, verse 3 said, commit your works into the hands of the Lord and your intentions will be established. Hallelujah. So commit your works. So anything you are doing, I believe you have an intention. It's a long range. Hallelujah. Okay. So, number one, about identity. He said, recognize or choose your identity. One of the important things you have to do as a believer is to recognize your what? Your identity and or choose your identity. Identity is what separates us, differentiates us from the other. Identity is a choice as well. You can choose the right identity. If you don't like who you are, change it. Hallelujah. If you don't like your situation, change it. You see, your life, you prospering in life is not a miracle. Miracle opens the door. Miracle opens the door. But keeping it, it's not a miracle. You see, anything that you see miracle, yes, miracle comes from the spirit and comes into the flesh. It's a supernatural intervening in the natural. But what happens with miracle is that when a miracle happens, it brings you to the same level like anybody. If you can't see, and then you are healed, and you can see now. Are you not seeing like anybody else? Yes. So it comes back. Miracle always end up in the knowledge realm. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? Miracle always ends in the knowledge realm. The reason why God has made it so, so that it can be duplicated and scaled. So the Bible said to your faith, add what virtue? To virtue, knowledge. And so, if I went for a mission, somebody said that he knows a pastor who went for a mission and prayed. And when he came to write the exam, he passed. And I told the person I can share wonderful testimony. In fact, in my life, when I was in abroad, schooling, working, also my mom was in medical school, I was doing a lot of, I needed money. It was tough. Well, one of the toughest times for me. And when I was coming, I prayed about it when I was coming. I shared it here before. When I was coming from work, morning, I went for a night to work, 8 p.m. to 6. I go for 8 p.m. to 6. Then I go for lectures. <laughs> hmm. Uh, so when I was coming, I saw 20 pounds. I picked. I went forward. I saw 30 pounds. I picked. I went forward. I saw 50 pounds. I picked money till I got to my door. And I said, does it mean I should always go and pray that I'll see money and be picking? There are a lot of miracles. I can share miracles upon miracles I've experienced. If you think there's no miracle, you are you're a Christian, you are lost. You see, miracle is there, but always it comes back to the knowledge realm for sustainability, scaling, and duplication. If I am sick and I pray, I'm sick of malaria, and I pray and I'm healed, how can I duplicate that to the whole world? Assuming this coronavirus, we pray the church, we pray God, take it away, don't let any coronavirus have us, don't let it have us, then Yes, can we duplicate such miracle? No. So it has to come back to the knowledge. We have to look at how it worked. Anything that is mystery does not remain mystery forever. Proverbs 25 verse 2. He said, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's a hand of kings to find it out. 
So when it is concealed by God, it's a mystery. But when it's found out, and it is the Hannah, God has appointed men to find it out. You check, you see, the thick sickness that are killing people today, we are praying for a miracle. In future, it won't be a miracle. That is why if you are a Christian and you think that it's prophetic, okay, you have miracles and all that, you won't go far. Your impact will be less. Because the thing you call miracle, one day they will do it. Please, I hope you are getting it. And then, what do you mean by your faith again? And so, Christianity goes beyond that. And so, when you recognize your identity, it is important that you do that. But if you don't, oh, okay, let me put it this way. You have to recognize it. If you don't like your state, choose the right one. This is how we are getting it. I think I've made the point now. Okay. So let's look at John 1 verse 12. He said, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in him, he gave them the right to become the children of God. So God gave us an identity. This is how we are getting what I'm saying. Now, if you are a Christian, I was telling the new generation that if you are a Christian, when they mention your name, it comes with something. It comes with excellence. For them, I told them that your name comes with what? Excellent. Bible said that he has called us so that we show forth the excellence of God. When they call your name, it must come with something. All of us have an identity. Believe you me. We call it in marketing brand image. If I call and mention anybody's name here, there is an image and belief. No, no. There's a feeling and belief about your name. Should I try? Mm. When I mention, I, I use popular example, which is, makes it easier. If I mention, let's say, Pastor Ransford, you all know CCC, isn't it? Comes into your mind. What else comes to your mind about Pastor Ransford? His simplicity. His kind of wisdom. He has a very practical intelligence. Well, for it's one of those ministers in Ghana with very practical intelligence. Anybody who have come close to him, when you come with a lot of papers, he won't mind you. He want action. Practical intelligence. That is why you have to, I said, you have to recognize your identity. It makes you live right. If you don't know your identity, choose one. There's a lot of identity in the world. Hallelujah. You can choose that for me. If they mention excellence, they should call me. If they mention quality. Japan, after the Second World War, things were in scarcity. And then they decided that they are good because everything was, everybody was producing wholesale. We call it production management or production marketing. If the thing is available, you will buy. So we do it in large quantity. Large quantity. Because so after the sec second world, I was not there. I'm saying that. Uh -huh. But the second world war, you see people wearing blue, 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 blue. Because everything was in scarcity. But Japan moved towards quality. And they decided that if you mention quality Japan, Quality assurance, Six Sigma, it all came from them. You see. So they have an identity. You must have an identity. Tell the person about you that you must have an identity. And tell the person you do have an identity. So if you don't know your identity, you think you don't have one, choose one. Go and find one and choose. Good name is better than great riches. It's better to have a name. No, the name they gave you during your birth is not the name. You see, it's not the name. Build a promise. A name is a promise. It's not, name is not sweet. It's not like my name should be sweet so that people, I know somebody said that if I'm called Johnson, they will say I'm a wife. No, no, who told you that? Look, there's, I know somebody, if you are talking, a very powerful man. Everybody, look, women wanted to have his name. He's a very powerful man. Is it not it? Yes, yeah, so name is the promise it gives. If they hear your name, it must come with a promise. You hear what I'm saying? So identity is important. Hallelujah. Please, I hope you are following me. I'm taking you somewhere. We'll get there. Romans 8, 28, it said, And we know that all things work together for the good for those who love him, who have been called according to what? His purpose. So there is an identity and there's a what? Purpose. Your identity will show the interpretation of your crisis. Your identity. And I added that every problem can be crisis 
or a job, depending on who is in it. If this place is flooded and there's a plumber here, is it a job or crisis for him? Yeah. Every, your identity shows the interpretation. You see? So, if you know your identity, you give right interpretation to life. I hope you are getting what I'm saying. If you know your identity, you give right interpretation to life. A businessman, when a businessman lose money, it's not good. They are happy. They are there working, finding another way to make money. The kind of reaction you get towards a crisis shows your identity. It is your ID card. Please, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That is why some people will commit suicide with a particular, that same issue, somebody will not commit a suicide. Because of the ID card the person has. If there's a war today, there's a war today. It's a crisis, big crisis, isn't also? But soldiers, their job, they are sitting by my camp, they are not doing so When the war is, eh, they will be happy. There's war. Is it not it? When armed robbers appear, police people will take their gun and go and fight. It's their job. They are paid for that. I don't know whether Ghana is done, but and I, I hear it's done. But the movies we watch, we see it is regular. They, they start going. Tell a friend that every problem can be a crisis or a job, depending on who is in the crisis. Hallelujah. And that is why every leadership presidents are chosen based on the current crisis. So when you, there's crisis and you come for election, they will ask you, let me see your ID card. Is that the identity? Does it match? You, you know what I'm saying? Those who have sat in plane before, if somebody's dying in the plane, they say, is there any doctor here? They will say carpenter. Because it's a job for the doctor. It's crisis for the rest of us. That is why you need to have an identity. Hallelujah. So 1 Corinthians 10.30 says, No temptation regardless of its source has overtaken or enticed you. That is not common to man. Anything you are going through, Bible is saying that people have gone through before. You see? And it's saying that, Okay, and ties you that is not common to human experience, nor in any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance. But God is faithful to his word. He's compassionate and trustworthy. He will not let you be tempted beyond your word, your ability to resist. But along with the temptation, he has in the past and is now and will and always provide the way out as well so that you will be able to endure without yielding and will overcome temptation job. So that is very important. That your identity gives you a sense of responsibility. Your identity. Look, I have seen that when I was preparing this thing, some of the things that I was looking at researching, I realized that people who don't have identity, people who are not, don't have sense of responsibility, don't know their identity. You see, if I come to church, you come to church one day, they said, Pastor is not here because he rained. You'll be shocked, won't you? I'm not saying a member, I'm saying a pastor. Won't you be shocked? You'll be one a pastor. Uh, NS will say it's not true. NS will be, will be, uh, because my pastoring comes with responsibility. Whether rain or shine, I have to come. So I've seen if there's financial, the, the church needs controls, finance. To an accountant, this is the whole job. Or in the ID card, yes. So it gives that person a sense of responsibility. The other time I was having a chat with Pastor Answorth on something. And then he said that, no, there's a, something I was talking to him about. And as we were discussing, he said, How about you are the one, you, you are the lecturer. You do the economics, you do the management. And why are you coming to me? Immediately he mentioned my ID, my identity. Immediately, responsibility came into my mind. Isn't it also? So, I didn't go further. I have to go and solve the problem. Because who should solve the problem? The, the businessman or the pastor? If it is a demon, I have a job. The demon, the pastor will cast it away. 
But if it's a business problem, then the businessman. Please, you get what I'm saying? So your identity always comes with what? Responsibility. When we give any people position in church, those who don't perform well, I realize they don't know what they are doing. They don't understand what was given to them. But those who understand, they know that it comes with what? Responsibility. So John 15 verse 6, he's saying that you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear what? Fruit. Immediately he chose them, he gave them identity. But he said go and bear fruit because that identity comes with what? Responsibility. And look at it, he said, fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father gives to you. So now look at the thing, this is the point. Identity is linked directly to responsibility. Responsibility is linked directly to reward. The reason why sometimes you pray, 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 God will mind. That's the answer. Bear much fruit so that whatsoever you ask. So if God gives you money, what are you going to use it for? Would you, if your, your staff come to you as a manager, he said, give me money, what do you ask? What are you going to use it for? So the fruit that you are supposed to bear, when you are bearing the fruit, the reward comes. Hallelujah. So identity is linked directly to responsibility. And responsibility is linked directly to reward. If Africans, we don't think like that. But if you don't think like that, you'll be poor. Anything, anytime anybody is giving you something, I can show you how to get money. Look, if anybody is giving you something for free, without you not doing anything, it's a path to poverty. If you want money from someone, if I people want people say they don't have money, I'm broke and all that. The thing that comes into my mind is that he's not giving any value. Give a value and you get money. If you come to me and say, Oh, Pastor, I'm selling Tobolo. And so can you buy some for, for you, your sake? I'll buy it. It is more honorable to come to me and say, I have Sobolo. And I'm doing this to raise money to pay my fees. I will buy like 10. Then saying, give me money. And you've given me value. So there is no way in Christianity God said we should beg. No, 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 no. You bear fruit. And whatever you ask, get. If the, the antithesis is also true. If you come to me and then you say, you want uh, money for a wedding. I won't give you. What's our area? But if you dis- when you bring me an invitation or your wedding is, I'll come. When I come and you are married, oh dear, I'll give you a donation. Isn't it so? So you see, always think like that. Bear fruit first. Think of fruit bearing because your identity is linked to it. And it's it push, you see, the more you bear fruit, it pushes and enhances your identity. You see, it, people want to be famous. I think the midweek I said that. I, I have one on my slide, but let me say this. How many of you want to be famous? If I say that, you know, Christians, they have a negative they hear about it. They will later. How many of you want to be prosperous? That one is more. How many of you? Everybody want to be prosperous. Now, listen. Fame, fame is a product of effectiveness. Nobody chooses to be famous. People who have tried to be famous, they are never famous. You check. Musicians, who I want to be famous? False would see those stars. They then me, I'm a star, you are inviting me. No, you are not in demand. You should. No. Those ask any great person whether in his mind he knew that he would be famous. Effectiveness brings fame. So, the product of uh, fame is a product of effectiveness. Prosperity is a product of what? Effectiveness. So now, how many of you want to be famous? Be effective. No, I, I, I've seen that that is the secret. If I want to be a famous pastor, I have to have put in my mind that I have to keep 10,000 correct messages. Uh, continuous, I have put in my mind that I have to prepare 10,000 every Sunday. I have to prepare and make sure I'm 
open the floor very well, effective message. So I do a lot of research. And I don't come and say, shake your leg, shake your leg, shake your leg. Shake your leg. It doesn't make you famous. No, it's a fam- prosperity is a product of effectiveness. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Romans 8, 6 verse 6. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that our body so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slave to sin. So the identity. Since you became a Christian, your identity has been changed. So you have to recognize it or ch- and choose that. Hallelujah. If anyone be in Christ, it's a new word. Or say, well, if anyone be in Christ, it's a new word. All things have passed away. All things have become what? New. So when you became a Christian, your identity has been changed. Readily make choices that manifest your identity in an external, externally recognizable way. Make choices. Apple makes correct choices because of their brand. A Christian must make correct choices because of their identity. You see, uh-huh. the, the, the people we work with, when they do graphics, they bring. Because of the brand we want to build as this church, I reject it. And I say, because of the brand we are building, this act will not work. Because we want to build a particular brand. So the choices you make in life, you ask yourself, these choices I'm making, is it corresponding? Is it in harmony with the identity I am choosing or I have chosen? Please, I hope you are getting what I'm saying. So it's very important. Please go to the next slide. The outside world infer, infers identity from, from these external clues. So the choices you are making is what gives them that idea that who you are you see, if you make wrong choices, if the choices you are making doesn't reflect, don't believe it. So there should be consistency in who you say you are. That is what they, don't, they are not in their mind. The Bible says that God looks at the heart. A man looks at what? The outward appearance. The heart there is only God who can see. That is why if you're a Christian, you don't add value. They might think Christianity is that value you didn't add. When Christians are poor, they, you see, because of the early messages that was preached to Christians, so that's why people think like that. Because they realize that many Christians are poor. So they thought Christianity is poverty. So anything that is opposite that, they think that and then it's like, People pray every day and they are poor. Why would people say it's because of your prayer? No, why? They will say that. Because your choices are not reflecting what you claim you are. And people, people infer that. They look at that. Hallelujah. You attract who you are, not what you want. Your identity is what attracts people to you. If you don't, if you have the wrong identity, let's first say we can, we don't have to go outside and say, "Hey, our church people who speak English, you come to the church." People who are in the class, but the intention of Pastor Ransford was to build this church for workers, working class, and all that people who are work, whether a carpenter, whatever, whatever professionals, and all that. But we can't go out and go and put it that. No, when you see the identity, you do what? Please. If I bring iPhone 13 that has not come to you and I say that it is 200 cities, would you buy it? How many of you would buy it? Why wouldn't you buy it? Oh, oh, did I use, okay, let me use iPhone 12. iPhone 12, they say they are not pricing that. iPhone 12, if I say 200 cities, would you buy it? Yes. Okay, so you won't buy it. Why wouldn't you buy it? Is why? No, the, the person has not said it's inferior, but why won't you buy it? You see what iPhone 12 can attract? It's attracting a particular price. Nobody is telling you, but it is the price. But if I bring you uh, the phone I bought that I was booting for a long time, 
If I come and I tell you that it is 5,000, you won't buy. You won't buy. Look, your identity, look, don't joke these things I'm telling you. Put it in your mind. You don't have to go and shout. I've told you. Don't, look, I've seen that visibility of a person. It's not a dressing. It's not a dressing. It's works. If you work hard and you get results, if you like, where shall we They say, okay, what's it called? For a more hungry, I see. But if you are poor, where shall we take? Yes. Look, get results in life. That's all. Go and bear fruits. That's all. Work hard. Put in your mind, I'm going to be a conqueror. But that is the last slide, anyway. So, your identity shows how people relate to you. Your identity shows how people relate to you. And I mean, look, don't demand respect. They will respect you if you don't. Why he doesn't respect you? No, no, no. Those words, no, no. Your identity, people will relate to you. If they know you are a pastor, there are things. You see, when we did this event center, when people come and they ask us, <laughs> can, can somebody like Shatawale come and I said, why not? So when we heard that you are a pastor, so we thought, why not? It's an event center. It's because of my identity. So they think certain things can be done here. We don't have to say that. All we have to do is to pray that we get more events that are not like that. Isn't it also? Yeah, but. They can come, but because of the identity of those involved, so they think they can't come and do it. So, your identity, the way people are relating to you, if you don't like it, check your identity. The problem is the signboard. You know? I saw a child bar this someday at the fruiting shop, as I did, that's what I five star. The master is that how we get five star? I didn't know that that's how we get five star. <laughs> And he was not attracting five star customers. When we say five star, it doesn't mean that the place is not. It means you attract five star customers. That is the meaning. If somebody says, I'm a five star hotel, he means he won't fight. Means he'll be one star and go and see. You won't you survive. You won't survive the price. So if they say five star, I hope you are getting what I'm saying. So if you see five star hotel, don't say by faith, I'm also going to be a one star. Price on the bomb. Come to me, Pia. It's for five star. Rose, have you seen how many of you see Rose West adverts? They've sent you an email before. You are not their customer. <laughs> they are there. Rose West, they are there. They, they, they send adverts. You are not their customer. So you don't get it. May God give you, bring you to Rose West stage so that you get, <laughs> you get their adverts. All right. So understand your identity is the first step of your difference. Okay, so I'm done with the identity. Let's go to purpose. So purpose is the driving force behind, behind personal decision. Purpose is your driving force. So let's look at a case study quickly. Second Samuel 5, 9 to 12. He said, David then took up residence in the fortress and called it the city of David. He built up the area around it from the terraces inward and he became more and more powerful. David became more powerful, isn't it so? Because the Lord God Almighty was with him. Now Hiram, king of Tar, sent envoy to David, along with cedar logs and carpenters and stone masons. And they built a palace for David. Then I look at what David, David seen all this success. Then David knew, the Bible said, then David knew that the Lord had established him as a king of, over Israel and had ex exalted his kingdom for the sake of his word, people of Israel. David's identity was a king, but the reason he was a king was there. The purpose was to take care of him. So, whatever your identity is, there's a purpose God has for you. More important, you see, David, when he got all those money, he realized that God has made him rich because of that. Many Christians, when they get money, they forget the church. Many Christians. Look, if you are here, you don't give offering, you don't pay tithe. All day. Last week I prayed, preached about that. You can listen to the last week's message. 
you are doing the little. There's a reason you are a Christian. There's a reason God has empowered you. Go all for yourself. To also what? Support the work of God. You have to settle that in your heart. This, you understand what I'm saying? You have to settle that in your heart. That God has prospered me because of the church. God has prospered me because of that. So David realized that all these things they brought to him is because of the church. And Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things that the Gentiles seek is going to add to him too. Psalm 37 verse 4. He says that delight yourself in the Lord and he will take your needs to be his care. When you become a Christian, you have entered into a mission of God. Join the family, know that God is working and he has entered. You can look and listen to the last week message and then see. So, David's sense of identity as a shepherd carried him to the throne. Now, your, your identity is what gives you the opportunity. Isn't it also? Right now, if there's a job here, and I'm saying that I want an accountant or electrical engineer, how many of you will qualify for it? Yeah, accountant. Yeah, you are chimiti, heavy say. The accountants will qualify, isn't it also? Yes, because their sense of identity, they will apply it. They will apply. They will say, well, let me go and ask whether I'm an accountant. No. They will apply because they are well, their identity. So they will apply. That sense of shepherding, David was a shepherd. He knew that. Bible, that's why his psalms was, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want most of the psalms he wrote, you can see shepherd underlining the whole thing. So, that sense of shepherding came there. So, this is the point. Anytime there is crisis, there is problem, there is opportunity, God looks at identity. All crises that have happened in the world, presidents that were chosen, were chosen because of the specific crisis. When World War II, when they wanted to end Wilson Churchill, his identity, his nature was the best to overcome Hitler. So immediately they over, you know that he was, he was voted out. Nelson Mandela got there now because of the apartheid movement. When they finished, he solved that problem, he was out. So if you don't have an identity, you won't even have opportunity. Specific David was chosen at that time because God needed a shepherd. Saul was not shepherding the people well. And so he needed a shepherd for his people Israel. So David was chosen. He was a shepherd. He moved him from the marital to the throne. May God move you from somewhere that you know you don't want to a higher height. Hallelujah. And may God help you to identify your identity. Hallelujah. So your purpose position does not make you a leader. It's your sense of identity, purpose, and responsibility that makes you a leader. One of the things I have seen in this church is that those who do well in this church are like those who work as well. Those who started, they, you, they came to the position because of the responsibility they were already doing. They are performing better. But those that want to post, they don't perform better. Anybody who does not take responsibility, doesn't have a sense of responsibility, we give you a position, he doesn't perform. Do you know why? Because every position comes with responsibility. That is why when we are training children, first train them to have a sense of responsibility. Go and clean the bowls. Go and do this. Sweep your room. It's giving them a sense of what? Responsibility. So we train up the way a child should go. When they go, they will not depart from. That's a new generation. I say, let them lead. Let them do this. Let them perform. I'm teaching them responsibility. Let them be their own leadership. Thy blessing. Continue. Look, do it. Be, be the team. Draw your program. Bring it. So he's learning the responsibility. I'll take it from there. They are learning responsibility. When they have grown, they already have responsibility, sense of responsibility. Hallelujah. It's dangerous to give a position to someone who does not have a sense of purpose or responsibility. 
if the person doesn't have a sense of purpose, responsible. If there's a flood here and there's a plumber seated here with his arm, would you be happy? Don't you think automatically you all be looking at him? He's a plumber. There's a problem here holding your arm. No, no, no. Is it not so? Hmm. When there's an engineering problem, engineers jump to the conclusion. Don't fold your arm. If they are doing that, then there's something wrong. So, it's dangerous to give a position to someone who does not have a sense of responsibility. The excuses you give tell us whether you have a sense of identity, purpose, or a sense of responsibility. The excuses, it weighs it. If I call and there's Sunday to come and sing, and I say, oh, Pastor, I'm eating, watching, let me finish. No, what I'm saying, so I call someone, some, you know, people, we've had choir people come here. Sunday service in the morning, we called the choir master. He said, oh, I've been a mad dad, sorry. Pastor, that's what to do. Don't let him come here again. <laughs> oh, how? That's what Pastor was saying. Oh, be how? Be my name, be how be Oh, it said, I'm, I'm telling you. It said, I must need to. If I show you my phone, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, I wake up very early, prepare. Sometimes I want to rest again. The alarm, I've set it right in front of me. He said, we trim no man tell we say minty we is it was so sad by all means I'll hear one. If I go being so good, sometimes I'm old, I don't even sleep again. Bible said that a wise son gathers during the summer. He said the foolish one he sleeps during harvest. The foolish one he sleeps during harvest. He doesn't have a sense of responsibility. Bible said. I passed at the foot of the lazy man and it was full of weeds. No sense of responsibility. If you employ people who don't have a sense of purpose and responsibility, you are doomed. Let them rise through the thing. Let's see them doing responsibility and give them a position. They will do well. They already have responsibility. They already know. So train your children to do the hallelujah. So let's look at the case study. So, and David said to you, go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah departed from the king's house and a gift of food from the king followed him. Now, this is a story about David sleeping with Bathsheba and Bathsheba became pregnant. And then David wanted to cover it by making Uriah go and sleep with Bathsheba. Then they would say, oh, it's your, it's your child, you know. Because that's Uriah's wife. So, but Uriah slept at the door of the king's house. Despite all the food they brought and all that, he didn't go to the house. They are just closed. But he said he didn't go. Because the Bible says that David stood at the top and saw Bathsheba. So, which means that they are neighbors. But he said that he didn't go. He slept. Look at where he slept. He said the door of the king's house and with, with the servants of his lord and did not go down to his house. So when they told David, say, Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? And Uriah said to David, the ark and Israel and Judah are dwelling in tent, and my Lord Joab and the servant of my Lord are encamped in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and drink and to lie with my wife, as you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. I will not do what? This thing. Uriah never he had a sense of responsibility. You know, in this chapter, I've seen some of the messages. You see, if you're a pastor, you preach, you have to know the state of your flock. It gives you an idea at least what to preach. There are people, I'm not saying for them to be pompous, but it is true. There are some of the people who work in the sometimes it's amazing, they inspire me. You see, yesterday I was starting, you know, I've gone to I drove to Accra, drove back, did so many things. So I was very tired. My body was aching. So I called Nicholas in the morning. I said, 
people as well, SCD, have you seen a pastor asking me, will SCD come, be crazy, come on? I was praying for Nicholas. He said, oh, pastor, today, dear. When I call, he said he's on his way. Here. Oh, pastor, they seem that I'm saying, I said, no, no. Then I have to stand up and come. You see, leadership, what you don't know is that, you know why Ghana is like this? Leadership is a two-way street. Either lead, the leader is following you as a leader at any particular point. So if the people don't lead the leaders well, they, they won't do well. If you don't put demand on leaders, leaders won't perform. So if the followers, the followers are not educated, you see, the way Africa is non educated, that's why we are getting this kind of leaders. They know they go to the best school, so but it's because of the demand we put. If I realize that, oh, if I come to class, whatever I teach, they oh yeah, should I prepare? When you come and get the students who are very good, they are asking you questions, they have read three, they have read what you are going to teach already, as we say, we don't watch you one day, and the next day, they see you. No, people are, look, when we were at the Caleb and Co, they come and sleep at the watch and dine. They sleep there till the next day. That time, Caleb's wife was pregnant. When the wife gave, look, I'm t- the day the wife was going to give birth, she came to church. And then, look, people are dedicated. They have sense of purpose. Not everybody who don't have sense of purpose. And so I've seen that. And that was encouraging. But it makes me, the pastor, want to move on. You, see, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So if people don't have sense of, we don't go anywhere. If you employ anybody that doesn't have a sense of purpose and responsibility, you are not going to go anywhere.